Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and in this video we are going to talk about how an APS-C sensor affects your f-stop. Before we get started, as always, don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb, and it's available anywhere that podcasts are found. Join my group on Facebook called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. Great community there. And follow me on Instagram. Not only do I post pictures of my work and examples, but I also post a lot of funny stuff, so you'll enjoy it. Just go to Instagram at Boo Ray Perry. All right, so let's start this off by talking about something that I got on my YouTube channel, somebody who had replied to one of my videos. And here is what he wrote. Your argument about the advantages of APS-C sensors in low light are ridiculous. Ridiculous? How dare you, sir? How dare you? First of all, putting a full frame lens at 4.0 on a camera with an APS-C sensor is like using a teleconverter. It also reduces the light reaching the sensor by 1.5 or 1.6 if you use Canon. This turns your f4.0 lens into something like f6.0 because a lot of the light hitting the full frame sensor is spilling off the edge of the smaller sensor, hence the crop. All right, let's get into this, shall we? I am absolutely capable of making a mistake. When someone writes something like this, even if they call me ridiculous or they come at me a little hard, my first impulse is, how dare you, sir? And then my second one is to go and look up everything that I talked about, because believe me, I can be just as wrong as anybody else. So I went and I did some quick research and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm right about this and you're wrong about this. And I said that. And then he came back and he said, no, uh, you can go online and you can look up these, uh, these crop sensor calculators and they will tell you right there that your f-stop changes when you use a crop sensor camera. I'm like, what? So I go and I look up the crop sensor calculator and sure enough, it kind of says that. But the problem is that people aren't quite understanding what it says. So here's what it actually says on a crop sensor calculator website. I'm going to read this to you. It says it calculates both the 35 millimeter equivalent focal length and aperture f-stop value or f number. This allows you to see how your image magnification and depth of field compares to a standard 35 millimeter camera. Now, that sounds like it gives you a new f-stop number, and it does. If you punch the information into the calculator and you say, I'm using an APS-C camera, and I'm using this lens and this focal length, you know, it'll give you a different f-stop number. You say, I'm using it at 4.0, it'll come back and say 5.6 which would make you think that it's telling you that this lens now is only letting in 5.6 worth of light instead of 4.0 worth of light. And by the way, if you don't understand some of these terms, I'm going to put a link right up here. Is it here or is it here? Uh, go watch my Bure Explains series of videos where I explain all the terms that I'm using in this video. All right. So anyway, it gives you a different f-stop number, but the key is in the second sentence. See where it says, this allows you to see how your image magnification and depth of field compares to a standard 35 millimeter camera. Now, you notice it doesn't say aperture value. It doesn't say exposure value. See, the reason that these calculators will give you a different f-stop number, a different aperture value, when they're giving you a calculation for your camera, is they're trying to show you the difference in the depth of field. And I have done a video about this, and I will put the link right up here, here. I always forget because it, it flips me. So it's this side? I think it's this side, yeah. The link will be up here. I did a whole video that explains how when you use an APS-C camera, it does affect your depth of field as long as you're taking the exact same framed picture. So what they're trying to do is, is they're trying to say, okay, if you've got a lens on your APS-C camera at 4.0, it's going to give you the depth of field of 5.6 if you had that lens on a full frame camera. So a lens at 4.0 on a full frame camera gives you depth of field of 4.0. That same lens at 4.0 on an APS-C camera gives you a depth of field of 5.6, but it does not change your exposure value. Just for the purposes of figuring out your depth of field, it's 5.6, but you still have the lens at 4.0 and you still get 4.0 amount of light. Let me give you a couple of examples. You notice how I don't do any fancy editing on my, <laughs> on my videos? <laughs> that's because this is a vlog, right? 
all the highfalutin technical stuff, there's plenty of guys out there doing that. This is just a vlog. So uh, here's a couple of examples to prove my point. Okay, first of all, using a crop sensor camera, does that change your f-stop? Because the crop sensor, it has less light than the full frame sensor. It's smaller, so it's going to collect less light, right? No, no. I mean, yeah, but no. So here's a nice experiment to try. Take two boxes. One of them is one foot square and the other one is two foot square. And put those two boxes side by side out in the rain. Now, after an hour, pull the boxes in and take a look at them. Which one of those two boxes has more water in it? Well, the two foot square box has more water in it, right? Because it's twice as big as the one foot square box. So it has collected twice as much water. Sure. However, which of the two boxes has a greater depth of water? They're going to be the same. Right, the two foot square box collects more water, but it also distributes that water over a larger area. So the depth of the water on both of those boxes is the same. And it's the same with your sensor. If you have a sensor that's this big and the light pours in and hits this sensor, totally the sensor gets more light. But the surface of the sensor, each individual part of that sensor, gets the same amount of light as this sensor gets. Just like the boxes in a rainstorm. Think about it. Have you ever gone to Home Depot and, and bought a, a rain gauge? Rain gauges come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are this big around and some of them are this big. They can be all kinds of sizes, right? Because it doesn't matter how big the rain gauge is, the water falling in is going to cover it at the same level, no matter how big the rain gauge is, as long as the openings are consistent. You know, the, like with a rain gauge and with a sensor as well, the opening has to be the same size as the bottom of the box. So the water comes in and only you get that much. So that's proof point number one, that it doesn't affect your f-stop. But here's the big one. <laughs> this is the big one. Think about light meters. Have you ever used a handheld light meter, right? Old school handheld. I have one. I have a Sikonic old school light meter. That light meter asks you two questions. It asks you to tell it, well, one of two things in the exposure triangle. If you tell that light meter, here's my shutter speed and here's my ISO value, and then you meter the scene, it will tell you what your f-stop needs to be to get the correct exposure. You can also tell it what your f-stop is and what your ISO is. It will tell you what your shutter speed needs to be. Or you can tell it what your shutter speed is and what your f-stop is. It will tell you what your ISO is. You give it two variables, it will tell you what the third variable is. What it doesn't do is ask you how big the sensor is. And it would have to ask you how big the sensor is if the sensor size affected the results, wouldn't it? Of course it would. I have a light meter. I bought it when I had a full frame camera. I meter the scene. It tells me the correct f-stop value. I switch to APS-C cameras. I meter the scene. It tells me the correct f-stop value. It doesn't ask me what camera I'm using because they are all the same. And finally, I've actually done this. When I made the switch, I actually did this. I think back in the video that I've got online here about how depth of field is affected, I actually took a full frame camera and an APS-C camera and set them side by side and set them to the same settings and they gave me the same image. So this video's title is a little misleading <laughs> because the truth is using an APS-C sensor does not affect your aperture value or your f-stop. What it does affect is your relative depth of field. And that relative depth of field is usually expressed by saying an f-stop number. Your depth of field, instead of being 4.0, will be 5.6. And this makes people think, oh, it affects my f-stop number. I'm getting less light in the camera. No, 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 no. For the purpose of, your camera is still set to 4.0, but your depth of field will be equivalent to 5.6. The light's still 4.0 but the depth of field equivalent to 5.6, all right? Just another wonderful way that they make your head want to explode when you become a photographer. And that's, this is just the burden that we have to take on when we decide to really get into the nuts and bolts of what photography is.
Listen, don't forget to throw me a like and throw me a subscription because it helps me to keep this channel alive. And all of my gear is online. All you have to do is go into the description down there and click on Blu-ray's gear and you can see all my gear, both my professional gear and the gear that I use them on vacation. And if you click one of those links and you buy something, I get a couple of dollars and that helps me to keep this channel alive. All right. Thanks for watching. Thank you.